Popularity, I can give you. Promotion, I can give you. Name it, whatever. Fall down and worship me. Do the ritual. Go through the ceremony. Get into the initiation and I will give you everything. That's what he presented to Christ. Christ will not fall down before Satan. I will not worship him. I will not fall down before Satan. You say it for yourself. You let Satan hear. I will not worship Satan. Look at this in verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. The third time again, you overcame the devil because it is written. It says, For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him. When Satan comes through this angle, he cannot get you. He comes through another angle, he will not get you. I thought you'll say amen there. Yeah. And he comes through another angle, and he will not get you. Yeah. Satan will say, this one will not bend. This one will not yield. This one will not sin. This one will not compromise. This one will not fall. Bye-bye. Satan says bye-bye to you. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Do you know why Jesus overcame? Number one, he knew what was reaching. Number two, he knew what he possessed. Know those two things. Number one, what is reaching? You know, Jesus Christ always referred to that. Reaching. Reaching. Look at Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. We're looking at verse 44. It says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. That all things, how many things? I said, how many things? Church, let me hear your voice. How many things? He said, I told you when I was here towards you that all things must be fulfilled, which were reaching. Look at that. All things reaching in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me he knew all that have been reaching concerning him go to genesis chapter 3 reaching concerning me and go to exodus reaching concerning me and he went through and he always meditated on that in his heart and when the devil came it took him no time at all to just bring it out and said it is reaching and on the basis of what is written, he overcame. On the basis of what is written concerning you, you will overcome. Look at Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 17. Luke chapter 4 verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of Isaiah the prophet. And when he had opened the book, look at this, look at this, he found the place where it was written. You see, as you read the Bible, and you know that you're a believer, and you put your name, if you're a believer, put your name every time you find the believer, who either believes, or the beloved, or the saint of God, or the heirs of the kingdom, and notice what is written concerning the believer. Notice what is written concerning the beloved. Notice what is written concerning the saint of God. Notice what is written concerning an heir of the kingdom. Jesus knew what was written concerning him. And we're told he found the place where it was written. Verse 18, 
the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. He knew that all that was written concerning him and he acted according to what was written concerning him. And he spoke according to what was written concerning him. And he resisted temptation according to what was written concerning him. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 7. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7, it says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. And because he knew, he came to do the will of God. And that was written concerning him. He found it in the volume of the book. And it was written concerning him. Therefore, he was always overcoming. And if you'll always remember, always meditate, always read in the Bible, always believe, always think about, always apply, always turn on the word that is reaching concerning you. Thank God you'll have a testimony. Thank God the power of God will walk in your life in Jesus' name. Look at another side of the victory of Christ. The victory of Christ was based on the knowledge of what he knew he possessed. If you're a believer and you're not looking at what is written concerning the believer and you're not thinking about, look at what I have. Look at what I possess. Look at what abides in me. If you don't know what you possess, the devil will be trying to present something to you you already have. And because you don't know you have, you will fall for his trick. I'm talking to somebody that will not fall over there. I said I'm talking to somebody that will not fall. Look at Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 6. Luke chapter 4. Reading from verse 6. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only, him only, him only shalt thou serve. Now the devil presented power and glory. And you think about Jesus, he knew himself, he knew what the Father had given him. He knew what he possessed already. And Satan was ignorant of that. And because of the ignorance of Satan, he said, look at it, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. I'll give it to you if you'll worship me. If you're ignorant, that's how the people of the world, that's how the messengers of Satan, that's how the tempter, that's how the temptress, that's how the defiler, that's how they'll come to you and be presenting something to you that you already possess, you didn't know that you possess. Look at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 35. John chapter 3, verse 35. The Father loveth the Son. And has given all things into his hand. Jesus did not need anything from Satan. 
the father had given him everything he possessed all things already look at john chapter 17 and i'm reading from verse 2 john chapter 17 reading from verse 2 as thou hast given him power over all flesh not that it will be given the father has given him already and satan was coming he thought that christ was ignorant of what he possessed if you're ignorant of what you possess they'll pick a flower from your yard from your from the back of your house from your own garden they plant that flower and it's from your garden and they present it to you and there's a lot of flower still there in your garden and you're not looking at your garden you're not looking at what you have you're not looking at your privilege you're not looking at the promises you have you're not looking at the at the property that you have and they come to present to you what you already have and they say i'll give you this beautiful flower if you will just compromise if you will sin if you will do evil get away satan we have what we need i said we have what we need look at verse 2 as thou was giving him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him matthew chapter 28 know what you have jesus knew what he possessed that's why the gift coming from satan the presentation of satan and the thing satan was saying i'll give you i'll give you i'll give you this did not ring any bell i did not uh, impress him at all matthew chapter 28 verse 18 jesus came and spake unto them saying somebody there tell me somebody there shout it out how many forms of power how many kinds of power any limitation to that power all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth satan came too late christ possessed all that already the same thing with the child of god know what belongs to you and when you know what you have already as an heir of the kingdom the devil will not come and trick you into sinning against the lord revelation chapter 11 revelation chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 15 revelation 11 verse 15 and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign how long forever and ever and jesus knew ultimately from the hand of the father all the kingdoms of the world will be handed over unto him and so satan coming with temptation the temptation held no water didn't take root and didn't take hold on christ because number one he knew what was written number two he knew what he possessed know who you are i said know who you are do you know who you are i said do you know who you are you are an heir of the kingdom all things are yours all the precious promises of god are yours healing is yours deliverance is yours salvation is yours redemption is yours power is yours holiness is yours paradise is yours heaven is yours happiness is yours and so satan cannot come there's something you don't have there's something the father has not given to you there's something christ has not made prov provided for you i'm going to give you this get thee behind me satan Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. 
For the Lord has said, only God will I worship. Somebody there, only God will you worship. Point number two now, our trust in his promise of kingdom triumph. Our trust in the promise of kingdom triumph. All we need is faith. You have faith, every mountain will move. You have faith, every sickness will be healed. You have faith, all the possessions you desire, you are going to have in Jesus' name. You have faith, angels will surround you. Your life will be protected. We trust in his promise of kingdom triumph. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. You will live by faith, you will not die. You will triumph by faith, you will not fall. You will overcome by faith, you will not be defeated. You will be victorious by faith in Jesus' name. Look at um, Romans chapter 4 verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God, who quickness the dead, everything that is dead in your family, in your body, will have resurrection life today. And call it those things would be not as though they were. Call it those things would be not as though they were. Before you see them, confess them. Say them out. I have them already. And because I have them already, a tempter coming, come to a herbalist, come to a digiman, come to make some potion, some lotion, and then rub on you. And then people will love you, they will like you, they'll come your way. Already heaven's love is upon your life. I said heaven's love is upon your life. And anyone that loves the Lord will love you. Anyone that does not love the Lord, what do you care about? Somebody is an enemy of God loving you. They are children of Satan. Let them get behind you. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. So shall thy possession be. So shall thy blessing be. And be not working faith. Be not weak in faith. That's all we need. Faith in God. Faith in God. Faith in God. It will cancel the power of the tempter from your life in Jesus' name. He considered not a somebody now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. That's how Abraham overcame. That's how you are going to overcome the promises of God covering every area of your life. You are not staggering at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. That's how to overcome. Being fully persuaded. That's how to overcome. You are fully persuaded. That everything that is written concerning you, everything will be fulfilled. And so when a persecutor comes, and the persecutor is saying, submit and yield and give your soul to us. That we can handle your soul, handle your destiny. If you don't, we're going to persecute you to the point of death. But... You know the promise of God. Your destiny is not in the hand of Satan. I didn't have the amen I wanted. Your destiny is not in the hand of a persecutor. I will not be happy if I don't submit to them. 
I will not be happy if I don't surrender to them. I will not be happy if I don't yield to them. They want my soul. They want my destiny. They don't want me to be a man of decision. They don't want me to decide and say, this is where I'm going, and I'm going to get there. They say, any decision I take is not going to hold except I surrender to them. I say, no, I will not surrender my soul to anyone. Somebody there, I will not surrender my destiny to anyone. Your destiny is in the hand of the Almighty God. You will not yield to the persecutor in Jesus' name. You have the promise of God and you will not fear. You have the promise of God and you will not stagger. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised was able to perform. Therefore, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. It will be.